We'll be trying to study some this morning in the book of Mark. Mark 5. I want to read a couple of three or four different uh, situations where that Jesus performed the miracles on, on certain people. And uh, I uh, it's uh, if we if we get close to it and understand it, we will we'll appreciate more what Jesus does for us. Amen. And uh, how that uh, sometimes we feel that that we've been left out. He's always uh, on our sides, and uh, we just need to uh, continue going and uh, thank the Lord for what He's doing for us. In book in the book of Mark, chapter five, verse one. And they came over unto the other side of the sea, unto the <clears throat> country of uh, Gal uh, Gadaria. Now this Gadaria, I tried to do a, a study on it, find out where it was at, and it's, co it's close to the uh, uh, Sea of Galilee. And uh, evidently it was uh, a place where that a lot of the Gentiles dwelt. Because notice here as they, uh, as they we see this year that uh, there's a there's a great uh, amount of uh, hogs and stuff in this area, so the Jews didn't do do that type of uh, they didn't raise those animals. But anyway, and when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwellings among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no knot was chains. And this man, this man was in bad shape. Amen. This man had these unclean spirits in him. And listen, this morning, uh, this man is like a lot of people today. The unclean spirits are, are in charge of them, and uh, they do just exactly what the unclean spirits want them to do. Right. And here he says here that this man, uh, he was in the, in, uh, met him out of the tombs, and men, <clears throat> and men with, unclean spirits who who had his dwellings among the tombs and you can imagine his condition because these tombs that they're talking about here were old caves and they would take their bodies and lay them out in there and uh, maybe put a petition in between there and then they'd leave another space for another body and this man here he was living in those caves mm -hmm. and uh, can you imagine what kind of condition he was in and what he was what he was putting up with but it with these unclean spirits and all he didn't know nothing different and he says here uh, in verse 4 because that he had been often bound with feathers and chains and the chains had been plucked asunder by him and the feathers broke in pieces neither could any man tame him so evidently they had caught this man and instead of killing him, they would they would time and keep him under control, or that he couldn't hurt anybody. But these spirits and all were so strong that he would break these chains and these these cords and all. And so, in verse five, it says, "And always, night and day, he was in the mountains, in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones." So this is this is what the unclean spirits can cause a human body to do and they can get them to a condition to where that they have no desire whatsoever to uh, be normal uh, all they want to do is just uh, hurt themselves and hurt people and just go about whatever whatever the spirit leads them to do this evil spirit leads them to do and so he was in very a very bad condition and listen uh, this day and time we still got people that, that are in these conditions. And uh, he says here, notice now, <clears throat> but when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshiped him and Amen. cried with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with thee? Now this, I look in some other places here and we'll read it in just a minute. But he says, what do we have in common with you? Now notice, in, if you would back in Mark 4, the same question was asked again, and it uh, might clear it up just a little bit, but in Mark 1, 4, 
I believe it is. Let me look. See. Mark 1:24. I'm sorry. Mark 1, verse 124. Here the here the uh, uh, the spirits are uh, talking to him. But anyway, in verse 21, and they went into Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one had a thought, had authority over and not as the scribe. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee? And notice here he said us, meaning more than one. Right. And uh, he was talking about himself and also with all the spirits, evil spirits that he had within him. And he said here, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? And in, all, in, in both these places here, these devils, these evil spirits, they recognize Jesus Christ. Right. They know who he is. And listen, they understand that the devil has bound them and has, has tricked them to come follow him and serve him. And he says here, he says, Let us alone. Uh, uh, we don't have we don't want to have nothing to do with you because we know what our end is and we know who we're, our master is and so he said, "Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee, who thou art, the Holy One of God." Amen. And so in this, Jesus got glory out of this, and, uh, and you know a lot of times we un we don't understand some of the things that happen in our lives and, and other people's doings. But listen, in this, Jesus got glory. Amen. In the things of all that the devil has to do, uh, Jesus will get glory for it. Because listen, Jesus lets him do what he will, and Jesus will get glory out of it. And if you'll watch and, 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 and serve the Lord and, and be close to the Lord, You'll see these things and you'll understand these things and you won't have the wrong idea about why that the Lord let these things happen. Because listen, He always knows what's good for you if you're serving Him and He always desires glory Amen. out of everything that you do. And, and the devils, they think that they're doing something to hinder somebody, but they, they don't. Again, here we want to uh, read just a little bit further. And Jesus... In verse 25, and Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. Amen. And when the unclean spirit had tore him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him, and they were all amazed insomuch that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commandeth he even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. So these people, when they seen Jesus doing this, they recognized what he had done. Right. And Jesus got glory out of that because he says here, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commandeth he even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. And immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the regions around about Galilee and forthwith and forthwith when they were come out of the synagogue they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. And so he got glory there again from the unclean spirits. Now back in our lesson in chapter Mark chapter five, he says here when and they and they cried with a loud voice and said, What have we to, what have I to do with thee? Jesus, thou son, the most high God, I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto thee, him, come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And so this unclean spirit had got this man in such a shape that he was, that he, he just didn't know what he was doing. In verse 9, and he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered, saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. Now, here, he's, the man is not giving him the answer. It's the devil that is of the, uh, these, these unclean spirits because he continues talking to these unclean spirits. Notice, he says, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he's talking about the, the demons that were in him. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. So he is having a conversation with these evil spirits, these unclean spirits. And he says, 
Now there was there nigh unto, unto the mountain a great herd of swine, and all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. And so these, these devils has to have, desires a place that they can, that they can be in, and it's, it's the same situation this morning, and, and I, I don't want to get me wrong on this, but the Holy Spirit of God has to have a temple for it to dwell in. And this temple is nothing but our, our, our bodies. And this is where the, the, the temple of the Holy Spirit comes and dwells with us. And, and so we need to understand that when we are saved and when we, we know the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, the Holy Spirit comes and dwells within our bodies. Amen. Now these bodies are defiled and they're unsaved, but the Holy Spirit speaks to our soul which has been saved by the Lord Jesus Christ. It is perfect and the Holy Spirit speaks to that and they, that, this Spirit guides this body and tries to keep it under control and makes it do what it should. And here again we see that these these legion of, of, of devils needs a fleshly body to move around them. And so here's what he said. He said here, uh, and he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. And there was, and now there was there nigh unto the mountain a herd of swine feeding, and all the devils besought him and saying, Send us into the swine and that we may enter in there. And forthwith, Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd run violently down a steep place into the sea. This is what, this is what it does to an old, dumb animal. Right. And the animal in this place here, he done he done something different from what the man did. The man existed and lived and did these things and fought against it. But these swine, they did have no part, did no part of this this spirit to come within them. And so what he says that they ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were all, about two thousand and were choked in the sea. Now this great herd of hogs had value to them, money value, and as a while ago I said a while ago, these were probably were Gentiles that were raising them because the Jews did not raise hogs because they were an unclean animal and they had understood it from the law about that they could not eat them, they couldn't touch them, and so these were uh, a place of Gentiles and they raised all of these hogs and listen, they, were, they, they had a value to them. Now notice uh, in verse 14, And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country, and they went out to see what it was that was done. And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed, and see him that was possessed with the devil, and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And they that saw it told him, told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him or ask him to depart out of their coast. Now, <clears throat> you see, they put more value in the, the herd of hogs right. than they did in this, this man here. And here it says that uh, he had the legion sitting, so evidently the, the man uh, up here in, in, uh, in verse 9, he said, My name is Legion, for we are many. And, and I thought probably it was talking about, but it may, may not be. But anyway, he had this man sitting beside of him, clothed and in his right mind. And here uh, these people considered this great loss that they had had of all of these hogs, and they didn't care, they didn't say it. Thank you, Jesus, for uh, letting this man live and be in his right mind and clothed in his own. But they said, why don't you just go and get out of here and leave us alone because you've done caused us great damage and you've caused us to lose a herd of hogs. 
And that, that's what they had in their mind. And they, in verse 16, and they that saw it told them how, well, I didn't read it. And in verse uh, 18, and when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devils, devil, prayed him that he might be with him. Now here, this is something this morning, uh, we that are saved, listen, our, our desires change when we are saved from a, a sinner's death. And listen, we have a desire to serve our master. Amen. We have a desire to do things that would be uh, a benefit to the to the work of Christ and to serve Him. And so, notice here. And uh, here, when they come to the ship, how be it? Je Jesus suffered him. He asked him that he might be with him. How be it? Jesus suffered him, but not, but said, or permitted him not, but said unto him, Go, go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee and hath had compassion on thee. Amen. And so here is, again, uh, here is the desire of this, 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 this legion man here. And he has a desire now not to be out in the tombs and in the rocks cutting himself and, and tied with chains and all this, but he has a desire to follow Jesus. And Jesus has got glory by letting this man be back in this shape. Amen. And also, he, you, we see here the change of heart that he has. And this morning, that's the change of heart that should be in every one of us that, has, that have been saved and, and, and wanting to serve the Lord because we should have, that should be the first desire of our heart is to go with Jesus, follow Jesus, and listen, he says here, you just go home and you talk to your friends and tell them how great things the Lord has done for you. And so in verse 20, and he departed and began to, to, to publish in the capitalists how great things Jesus had done for him and all the men did marvel. And so we see that he has went from a, from a man tied by Satan to a, uh, to a preacher. Amen. He is telling all these people what happened to him. And listen, don't you know, don't you know that he was a big influence because of the condition that he was in and how they seen him and how they was afraid of him and how they tried to control him. And now here he is speaking clearly, clothed like he should be, a type of a Christian. Amen. A type of someone that loves the Lord and someone that wants to do good and, and to serve serve the Lord. And so he was a he was a great uh, benefit to a lot of people there. And so here uh, in uh, in verse 21, and when Jesus was passing over again by ship to the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there come cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus, by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hand on her that she may be healed and she shall live. Now you put yourself in the same shoes with this man Jairus here uh, and think about the many times that you have went to the Lord in prayer and prayed that, that He would heal one of yours or heal some of your loved ones. And listen, this is, this is what I want you to see here now. Listen. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. Now, a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and has suffered many things of many physicians and has spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather getting worse. Does that sound familiar to somebody? Well, that's the way of, uh, of the world and how that, uh, how that the world will treat you. But now notice, when she had heard of Jesus, came in and, and pressed behind him and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. We this morning need faith like that. Amen. 
we need we need our faith stirred up to court that we don't say, well, maybe uh, some type body this or something like that. But she said here, for she said, if I may touch but his clothing, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Amen. Now, remember all this time, while this is going on, this man has come and asked Jesus to come to his house and heal his daughter. And what does Jesus do? And, and here he says uh, in verse 30, And Jesus immediately knowing in him that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about, in the press and said, "Who touched my clothing?" So, do you come? Don't you imagine that Jair Sher was saying, "Would you please? Would you please go down? Would you please go down?" But listen, Jesus has something to prove to these people right here. Jesus had something that he wanted the people to see as they followed him, because this this woman was not going to come forth and right. say. Uh, Jesus, I, I touched your clothing, and I knew that if I could touch your clothing, you would heal my body. But listen, notice. And he, in verse 32, and he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. So there was the glory that Jesus wanted. That was, the, that was the thing that he wanted the people to see because he knew, he knew about this little, little girl at this, at this man's house. He right. knew about her. But listen, Jesus had this and he, he wanted the people to see this. And listen, people, sometimes we need to stop and open our eyes and look and see what Jesus is doing. Right. Because there's so many times that Jesus is doing stuff for us that we don't even we don't even recognize it whatsoever. But listen, you you just kind of keep your eyes open and watch because every day, every time he's doing things for you, and a lot of times you don't remember. But the thing of it is, uh, he is. And here he said here, uh, and and he said unto her, daughter, thy faith. Now listen, he didn't, he didn't say, I healed you, but he says, Thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of that, thy plague. And so here again, he's encouraging the woman to continue in the faith. And he's saying, hey, your faith, your effort to get here through this crowd and just to touch my clothing or to touch me, he says, it's, it's healed you. It's made Amen. you whole. Your faith. And... People, the, our faith is so weak sometimes. Amen. And we 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 just we just we pray and we walk away doubting. We pray and we doubt what the, the Lord will do. But listen, He's always there to listen. And if you just if you just wait upon the Lord and and listen to what He has to say and do what He wants you to do, you'll see that He's been there all the time. And uh, your faith will, will not return unto you void. And so he said here, Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. And so in verse 35, And when he, and when he yet spake, there come from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Now you know the first thing Jairus thought about? Jesus, if you just want to hurry it up and come on, it would have been all right. But notice, as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. Again, we see here the faith. He's, he just asked it, hey, you just believe and you have faith and everything will be all right. And he said, Be not afraid, only believe. And verse 37, And he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And he cometh into the house of the ruler of the synagogue and seeth the turmoil 
and them that wept and wailed greatly. When he was come in, he said unto them, Why make ye this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. And, uh, you know, that was to them laughing because here, notice verse 40. And they laughed him to scorn because someone had already pronounced her dead. Right. She was not breathing. But the thing of it is, he told, he told him up here in verse 36, be not afraid, only believe. So we see here then in verse 41, and he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, this word, Tala, whatever, Kamuna, I can I can pronounce it, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. Now, where did this happen again? With Lazarus. He said, come forth, Lazarus. And, and Martha said, had you come here, if you'd have been here just a little bit earlier, Lord, this, my brother might have lived. But he says, he's not, he's not dead, he will arise. And so here, he said, and straightway, when he said this, the damsel arose and walked, for she was of age of 12 years, and they were astonished with the great astonish with great astonishment and he charged them straightly that no man should know it and commanded that some things should be given her to eat and so don't you know when he commanded them that no man don't you go tell nobody about this listen people if you had a if you had a baby or if you had a friend or if you had a, a loved one that was laying there dead and someone come in and prayed over her, touched her, him, raised him up. Do you think that you'd stay quiet? I know I wouldn't. I'd be telling it all over the country. Uh, even if, people, if people didn't believe it, I'd still tell it. And here he said, here, but he said here, charge him straightly that no man should know it and commanded that something should be given her to eat. So we see these are some of the things this morning that Jesus did in this little place here. And uh, it's something that we need to, uh, I mean, hear read and understand that Jesus is still on the throne. Amen. Jesus is still answering prayers. Don't let your faith fall. Don't let you get weak in faith, but just continue praying. And, and listen, if you don't see things, if you don't see it happen immediately, no, don't get discouraged because a lot of times you, you need that patience Amen. in order to uh, appreciate when the Lord does do these things for you. And so this is the lesson that I have this morning for you. And um, I hope it will encourage you a little bit and uh, strengthen you because Probably in the next week you'll have a, a, a situation right. uh, that uh, you can relate back to this, and and the and the Lord will strengthen you. And remember, you have that Holy Spirit within you. This Amen. You say, and He'll encourage your heart too, because uh, that's He's the one that comforts you. So remember these these scriptures, and uh, if you wanted to, you could go back and uh, read it, and uh, maybe get a better blessing. Thank you all so much. Amen.